Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And today I'm going to show you how to make a custom editor. And if you see down the right hand side, this is how it looks by default. This is just an example. It's almost like Blue Peter. And here's one I made earlier. And you can see that I've got drop downs and I've got the ability to make it look more organized with specific groups in different areas and also be able to have the enum drop down to be able to change if we choose a wizard or a warrior, we'll be able to show specific fields that we want. And also that if we tick the can jump, we show then extra sort of fields and settings that we might want to be able to set. And this is looking at the private fields rather than a lot of tutorials just showing everything as public and it is easier to access that way, but it's not good practice to have every single field to be public. So we'll look at that and of course comment down below if you've got any suggestions. So to get started, you need to make sure that you've got an editor folder in your asset. I'm going to right click that and I'm just going to create a new C sharp and I'm just going to call this in reference to my player controller, just call it player controller editor. We'll open that up here and I'm just going to get rid of everything that we've got at the top here and be using the namespace of using Unity editor. Once we've set that, we have the public class at the name, but we don't need to derive from mono behavior anymore. This is just going to be an editor script. Now to be able to access this and access the script that we want to be able to use, we need to write above that class two square brackets. Then we'll say custom editor and then open up brackets. We'll say type of, and then in another set of brackets, we're going to write whatever script that we want to change the inspector of. And now this will help us overwrite the default functionality. The basic method you do to override anything is public override void on inspector GUI. And by default, when I tab that out, it add base on inspector GUI. And this just means when we go back into Unity, it'll just draw the base inspector for us. But really, I don't want that to start with. We're just going to add our content here with when we want to do it. But as I said, I wanted to show you how to access the, the private variables that we've got in the script. So we need to use something called serialize property, which is going to allow us to access all those different things that we want to access. So what I like to do is see what variables I have. So I just copied all of my fields that I wanted to use into this other script and deleted uh, things before the actual declaration. So what I'm going to do in all these cases is I'm just going to keep the names exactly the same and just put serialize property before each of them. So now you can see them all here and they can all be ready to be used. Now, what you might want to do is have a just a region for your serialized properties. And then I'm going to just end the region so I can just close that up so we don't have to actually see that. Then we're going to have another method called void on enable. So when this happens that we need to actually find all of these properties that we want to use to be able to access. And yeah, this is a little bit of setup compared to just having everything as public, but it's the best way to do it and to just make sure that these scripts are more refined. What we do here is we just reference the property that we just serialized set that equal to the serialized object dot find property and then in quotes the actual name again that we're going to use so we can set it up just like that so again i had player type i set that equal to the serialized object dot find property and exactly what is in this other script and then i'm going to finish this up by just doing exactly the same thing and then in our main content what we need to be able to do is we need to write in the serialized object dot update and we'll run this method that which just means it'll update all serialized objects that we need to use and also at the end we want to put serialized object dot apply modified properties again just so that we apply everything and update this as soon as this method runs so we don't get any issues down the line and of course these two don't need to be edited and you can put everything in between both of these so now let's say that because we've already serialized these properties we can access them in a in a quite an easy way we can do the editor gui layout dot property field and then in broken brackets we'll just reference the property that we just created. So in this case, will be player type. You can see now in the inspector, the only thing available is my player type that I can set and everything else has disappeared, which is fine because it's what we wanted so far. Now, of course, if we wanted to add the settings in for the player run speed and walk speed, we can do the same thing. Edit to GUI layout dot property field. And of course, if we wanted to add the walk speed and the run speed, we can do the same thing by putting those into the property. And then if we go back to Unity, they appear there. 
But of course, we said we might want to organize this in a bit of a nicer way, maybe have a bit of a drop down to be able to just encapsulate them and keep them away so we don't need to see them when we don't need it. At the top in our serialized properties that we created, we can just create a bool. Our player speed group set that equal to false. And now around these objects, we can say that player speed group is equal to the editor GUI layout dot begin fold out header group because the header just allows it to be a little bit more bold and nicer to read. And then in brackets, we're just going to add the actual Boolean that we're going to use. So player speed group again, we'll give this a name of the player speed, make sure we've got a semicolon on the end. And then we'll say that if player speed group is true at any point, then we'll take our two property fields and paste them in there. So now when we go back here, we've now got player speed and it's a nice little drop down for us to use. But then, and now we also need to do at the bottom of this, we need to say editor GUI layout dot end fold out layer group. And remember you can create other things with the editor GUI layout because you can use editor GUI layout dot label field and then set this to test. We can also have editor GUI layout dot space if you need to add a space between things in between. So if I go back into Unity now, you can create additional labels, spaces, and lots of other things in there. But so again, we could copy all of this section that we just created for the player speed. And again, what we can do is we can go back to the top and on this Boolean, we can just add a comma and I'm just going to call this player jump group. And with that being created, I'm just going to again set player jump group set that equal to the begin the header group set that again to the option inside the parameters then i'll set it to player jump and then say that if player jump is true then we want to say that the jump height and can jump now that's fine and that will show everything underneath but say i like i said we wanted to have if we tick can jump we want to show the additional options this is where we need to add a little bit of logic to find something from our previous script which can access it and change it and find what's actually gone on in that script now for this case as i said we could create a property for this but i'm just going to make it easier by only changing one or two public what i'm going to do is i'm just going to change the can jump to a public bool so we can just access it more easily. Now in this other script that we have, we can specify that player controller, and I'm just gonna write a shorthand, I'm just gonna write a field name for this. So the player controller is underscore player controller equal to, and then we're gonna cast the player controller to target because that's what this uses to be able to access it. So now we can access everything in this script if it say it's a public variable without doing these references at the top. But I'm only using this at certain situations. So inside our player jump group, we can say that if player controller dot can jump is true, then inside the brackets, we can say that we can specify the jump height or whatever other properties or fields we have. But in this case, we need can jump to be the first option before we check to see if it's true or not. So we'll put that above. And if we go back to Unity, you can see player jump. We can open that out. You can see can jump is false. If we set that to true. You can see that now we can set the jump height. And if we get rid of that, it's not available. So it just helps us keep it nice and neat. And we've got a few options to be able to do it. And now the next one could be the player health. So we could just do it as the, just the same as the speed. So in this case, we're going to do again, set another Boolean to player health group. And then down here underneath the player speed, we'll change that to the player health. And then in this and these GUI layer property field, we can say that the player current health and the max health that we wanted to add. And there you go, we're building everything up in our inspector. And you remember the last one I had was an event. And if we can do that in exactly the same way, if we need to access the event, so then we can create a player death group, create the header, and just add the player death to the property that we want. And again, when we open this out, we have the events already in there. And now there was something we wanted to do with, if we go back to the top, we wanted to set that when we set the actual player type, we wanted to be able to set an option to appear or disappear. So we'll go out back to our player controller and make sure that both of these, the enum and the player type are both public, just so we can access them more easily in here. And we're going to be able to showcase that when we select one of the options, we'll show some options. So we'll say that if, 
underscore player controller to access the script. Then we'll say player type is equal to player controller dot player type dot. And in this case, we could have warrior. Then so if warrior is selected, we can do exactly what we did down below. And we'll say that if then the warrior group is equal to the begin warrior group, but I need to just create another Boolean. And I'm just going to create that up here and just call that the warrior group. And if that's the case, then we can show the stamina, the max stamina and the sword damage as long as we've actually selected that because it will be a group in itself. So we'll go to unity again and you see player types on none. If we set that to warrior, we now get the warrior options. If we set it to anything else, we don't get anything obvious. Now, if we go back to our script, we could do copy that exact same line again, paste underneath. And we'll say, but in this case, if it's actually wizard, we'll just change the actual properties that we find inside that logic. And also I'm going to create another one be called the wizard group and change everything that I need. And then also make sure that you change the name of the actual layout group. And now when you change, you've got warrior and you've got wizard. Wizard has mana. We'll change the warrior. We have stamina. So here's just some ways to be able to fold things away that you've already created, be able to create little booleans that if you set true or false, and then using an enum to be able to show and hide specific options that you might want to use based on your script that you've written yourself. And do give me any suggestions if you've got anything for this tutorial or anybody else to understand. So be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 145 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Come and join me on Discord if you want to chat. Check out my great assets on the Unity Asset Store, along with great savings on my websites for all those great assets. And then a big thank you to all my patrons, including Peter Steiner, Raheem Whitaker, David76, Gene Pommy, Manus Barakas, Terence Conrad, Gage Linston, Walter Dunson, John John Games, Joseph Newman, Arene Leisure, Darren M, Topher Chambers, Kreshne Kalili, Matt Claudius, Bond of Blood, Isaac Simani, Julian Gonzalez, Gary McGee, Harry Dobson, Martin R, Christian Selen, Skya Skya, Benjamin P, Shankle, and HK. And thank you to everybody else for coming to watch. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.